Well, let's stay with the war in Ukraine. Mark Weller is a professor of international law and international studies at the University of Cambridge and the former senior United Nations mediator. He joins us live now from the British city. Uh, Mark, let's start then with this warning by Russia to the United States and its allies of, quote, unpredictable consequences if they continue supplying weapons to Ukraine. What's your interpretation of that? I think it shows that this is really make or break for the Russian invasion. The larger aims uh, of really subduing Ukraine as a whole could apparently not be met. Now everything is being thrown into the battle for Donbass. And I think the Russian Federation sees that there's a risk that more heavy weapons will now be supplied to the Ukrainians, which could put their campaign mainly in that region at risk. So they are nervous. They want to intimidate the West. But my impression is that uh, arms deliveries will continue. And as time progresses, the Russian side will exhaust its supplies and the Ukrainian side will gain more and more weaponry. And we've had several rounds of negotiations so far, admittedly with little progress. How much room do you think there is uh, left, at least for a diplomatic solution, as deaths continue to mount on the ground? Yes. On the one hand, President Zelensky has said it's more difficult to negotiate once the atrocities become more known. Uh, on the other hand, the Ukrainians have, from the very beginning, even when faced with this initially vast invasion of the entire country, been open to holding negotiations, which is surprising in a conflict of this kind. Moreover, the Ukrainians actually offered uh, to meet one of the key demands of the Russian side, which is to declare Ukraine a permanently neutral state, never to become a member of NATO which is a significant sacrifice in a way because it allows President Putin to claim that he has won a key aim in his war. And I have a feeling that the opportunity for a settlement is receding. Um, if the Russians are waiting until they've fulfilled all their military aims, and then they will hold the territory they gain. I can't quite see why the Ukrainian would offer anything like neutrality uh, in that kind of scenario. So I think there's still an opportunity for maybe two weeks to make a groundbreaking deal. If that deal is not made by then, perhaps we are looking at a kind of stalemated military situation or one where the overwhelming number of Russian forces will bring advantages to them, but no decisive result that will impel either side to settle. So I hope that the parties will actually realize that there is an opportunity now uh, to move forward in an innovative way despite the challenges posed by the discovery of some of the gruesome atrocities. Yeah, interesting you say the next fortnight could be key for uh, those diplomatic efforts. Uh, you've looked at mediating in, in conflicts in the past. What sorts of concessions do you think will be needed, not just from Ukraine, but from Russia as well? And how can those guarantees be upheld, given the obvious lack of trust between the two? Yes. Uh, well, the Ukrainians have suggested that permanent neutrality is possible. Uh, this would be balanced by security guarantees that some uh, states friendly to Ukraine would promise to protect them if ever they are attacked again, and the Russian Federation would need to accept that. There's also an indication that perhaps EU membership, after all, might be possible for Ukraine, which would solve many, many issues. The EU is quite a peace-loving uh, institution uh, and offers a great deal of support for reconstruction and for other measures. Uh, the big sticking point is going to be recognition of Crimea as part of Russia and recognition of Luhansk and Donetsk as independent states, which is something the Ukrainians have said they cannot ever accept. And that is in accordance with international law. International law doesn't really allow for the conquest of territory by force. So there, I think, some clever solutions need to be brought forward that allow both sides to maintain face and uh, it needs to be a solution that is in accordance with principles which most states uh, in principle all states until now also russia adhere to which is the u.n charter and the prohibition of uh, really territorial conquest through military might something incidentally which china too supports very strongly We'll leave it there. Thank you, Mark Weller, Professor of International Law at Cambridge University.